Now let's consider a very important group of thinkers known as the School of Salamanca. By the way, here's a picture of modern Salamanca. It's a mid-sized city in northwestern Spain. It has a very old and very famous university dating from the 13th century and also a very important and well-known cathedral. In earlier times, the city was a center of Spanish learning. Just for some general background, the School of Salamanca gets started in the 16th century and runs about halfway through the 17th century. Uh, these thinkers could most generally be called in the scholastic tradition, so they were drawing on Aristotle, St. Thomas, and earlier Catholic and medieval thinkers. They inquired quite directly into the nature of value and also the determinants of market price and the question of what is a just price. So they're straddling questions of economics and ethics. They wrote on a broad variety of issues, not just economics. These included natural law, tyrannicide, when you have the right to kill a king, the rights of the New World natives, and international law. And in all of these areas, they've had significant influence on Western thought. They weren't just people writing on economics. I read them as fundamentally thinkers who are concerned with ethical and religious questions. I don't view them as modern economic thinkers in any way, but rather they're people who are taking older Catholic ethical frameworks and trying to improve them by injecting in some better and more economically oriented reasoning. Some of the more important thinkers and names in this tradition were de Molina, Suarez, and de Vitoria. To get a sense of how these writers were laying some ground stones for later modern economic reasoning, here's a good and typical passage from Domingo de Soto, and this was written in 1553, well before, say, British writers were showing any kind of real facility with economic concepts, and I quote, In examining the problem of the just price, we must first take into account the demand which exists for the article and its abundance or scarcity. Next, we must bear in mind the labor, trouble, and risk which the transaction involves. Finally, we must consider whether buyers are scarce or numerous. Some of the Salamancan writers would take this or a comparable understanding of supply and demand and use it to justify usury, namely the lending and borrowing of money at a positive rate of interest. This is again an example of how modern economic reasoning is starting to get underway. Some of the core elements you're seeing in the Salamancans are an understanding of utility and value, an appreciation of supply and demand, some grasp of market competition, and also, because of the aforementioned, they tend to have attitudes which, relative to their contemporaries, are relatively pro-commerce. The Salamancans also did some monetary theory, and a lot of this was motivated by the 16th century influx of silver from the mines of the New World pictured here is Tosco, Mexico. So in these writings you find the beginnings of some kind of quantity theory of money, namely that the price level is proportional to the money supply, the notion that money will flow to locales where it has the higher value or where the demand for money is highest, and in general you see the beginnings of an approach called purchasing power parity, that is understanding some equilibrium across international price levels and money supplies, and also a price specie flow mechanism, the beginnings of an understanding of how, when an extra dose of money supply enters the global economy, how that gets distributed around the world in a manner which resembles some kind of equilibrium. The Salamancans really were pioneers in all of these areas. I really wouldn't say they spelt it all out or understood all of the details and mechanisms, but this was a big step forward in economics, and the later advances of the 18th century in these areas, or late 17th century, really did build upon the Salamancans. Two of the significant Salamancans to read on monetary economics would be Navarro and Di Mercado. For further reading, there's plenty, and a lot of it's online. Of course, just Google School of Salamanca but also read the books by Marjorie Grice Hutchinson, and some of these are even available online and free. For instance, Google to her work, The School of Salamanca, which has, in addition to her commentary, original readings by the theorists I've been mentioning. This is really an excellent collection. There's also an interesting essay by Murray Rothbard, New Light on the Prehistory of the Austrian School, which tends to read the Salamancans as really quite modern precursors of Austrian economics. 
I view them a bit more as embedded in an earlier Catholic and ethical tradition, but nonetheless, if you wish to get a good sense of how the Salamancans are so very strongly pointing forward, that's one good place to look.